Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Pinsada's Place. Our guest has worked with Skrillex, Lady Gaga, Zed, Grimes, and a bunch more. You're going to enjoy a conversation with Tom Norris. And we've got a brand new shop talk for you. But a couple of quickies first. Reminder that Sweetwater Gear Fest is now an online event. It's about a month away, June 26th and 27th. Plenty of workshop seminars, hourly giveaways, deals on gear, all from the comfort of your home. If you need to know more, just check sweetwater.com forward slash gear fest for info. You don't want to miss that. Also, week three winners of our warm Wednesday mic giveaway. The winner of the WA84 diaphragm condenser microphone from Liverpool. Go Beatles. Rich Bond. Yay, Rich. And the winner of the WA47 Junior FET black condenser mic is from San Francisco. Miss Laura Cortese. Yay. Congrats to both of you. Now, for the rest of you, one more week, two more winners. Anywhere on the planet, 21 and over, get cracking, get cracking, get cracking. Where do you get cracking? At warmaudio.com forward slash warm hyphen Wednesdays. You see that link right there. Let's get in. I want to announce your names next week. And by the way, you want a free Splice Pack 100? Also go to the link you see below. Enter the code PENSADO101 and you are golden. You got access to sound, software, even production tools at a very low cost. Millions of royalty-free samples, loop sound effects, and presets from Splice Sounds. Low, low monthly pricing. A mobile app where you can work on the go and have it ready to rock once you get to the studio. And artist packs in there from Murder Beats, The Quarantine Kid, Oliver, and a ton more. Global original content from Senegal, Iceland, Soul Surplus, Capsun Pro Audio, all kinds of stuff. And finally, Rent to Own. You buy, you pay over time, you own it by the end. Rent to Own has 20 plus name plugins like Isotope Zone Zone, Cerium, Arturia 5, Plus Studio One Workstation, and they've added RC20 and Cashmere Essentials, all free. So, for two more weeks, flood the zone, get yours, Splice Pack 100. That's 100 free uses over a month. Again, hit the link below. Use the promo code PENSADO101. Dave says get cracking. I say get cracking. Get cracking. And a tip of the cap to Splice for their stimulus program. They make it available for artists affected by COVID-19 by the virus, and that is giving back to the community in a big way. Congrats, you guys. Okay, now, do us a favor. Like, subscribe, click notify, uh, sign up for our newsletter. We want to hear from you. We want to be able to get to you. You can hit us on our socials at Pensado's Place, at Dave Pensado, at Herb Trollick, and we appreciate that. Dave is off preparing some new ITLs, but we've got a brand new shop talk for you from Laura Escaday. Hey, what's up? I'm Laura Escaday. I'm an artist, entrepreneur, and live show designer. Welcome to my studio. This is where all the magic happens. I actually just got done doing a live stream, and it's up on my YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Did a bunch of violins and controllers and looping and all that stuff. This is my main station here where it all happens. This is my Ableton Live set um, where I run all of my synths and my violins through it. Um, I've got this iPhone here where I can change between different camera angles um, to show the live streamers what's going on. Uh, they can even see my Ableton Live set. I've also got visuals that they can see as well. I'm using this iPad as another monitor. I've got this Wii controller, which I use for vocal effects. I've got the MIDI Fighter Twister um, for controlling different effects on my violins and the Sensil Morph for controlling some effect sounds. I've got the Hawken Continue Mini right here, uh, which is a synthesizer I'm using to um, control with my electric violin, as well as the Livid Instruments Ohm controller, which is a lovely MIDI controller for knobs and faders and controlling levels and effects and all that kind of stuff. And then over here, I've got my visual computer and I've got the Apogee Element 24 that I'm using um, for that. 
and I'm using the Universal Audio Apollo for my main uh, audio sounds that are all coming, all the synthesizers and everything are coming into this, as well as the violins here that you see. I've got the acoustic and I've got the electric, 3D Various and the Realist violin. And then I've got my synthesizer. So I've got my Moog, Mother 32 and DFAM. Um, I've got the Peak, Novation Peak controller, which is controlled by the complete control right here. And then I'm using the subsequent 37 by Moog as my um, main mono synth here, which I love. And then I'm experimenting with quadraphonic sound. So I am using these KRKs as my channels three and four for now. Um, and I'm starting to mix the sound so that I can have violins coming from different areas and, and different um, sides of the room. So yeah, so that's pretty much my studio setup for right now. I've um, been doing a lot of live streaming. Definitely check out my YouTube um, if you want to check out what I've been doing. And thanks for watching. Peace. Lady Gaga's project Chromatica dropped this week. Our guests worked on it regularly collaborates with Skrillex, Zed, and Grimes, as we said earlier, plus a bunch more artists. He is super gifted. We caught up with him last week and had a great conversation. Please enjoy Tom Norris. Hey, man. How's it How going? Good, good. <laughs> yeah? <So laughs> as, as good as one can be. be. Huh? I was going to say as good as one can be, uh, you know, 75 or so days into uh, to quarantine. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. How, how has it affected your creativity? Um, I think there's definitely been some emotional hurdles, not, you know, to be completely honest, that it's, you know, it's tough not being able to see your friends, yeah. being able to see your, you know, family. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that I have never experienced. I mean, I think we all uh, work you know, in more or less a secluded way. That's sort of the, the nature of the, the work. But I never realized how much I value those um, punctuated periods of, of being able to actually see people or, or just go on a walk to your favorite coffee store or, yep. um, you know, go shopping or whatever. And can I just say good on you for bringing it up? We have, in the last year, we've seen more and more people talk, like Ricky Reed and other folks, even in our own camp, talk about how being sort of emotionally balanced and connected and fulfilled is important to try to achieve. And if not, it's important to reach out and talk about it and get help. There's a direct correlation to your creativity and your functionality and to try to keep it in and all that kind of stuff is a bad idea. So to our audience, when you hear the best doing it, that you don't have any reason not to not to try to do it if you feel affected by it. You're human. You're not a robot. Fair enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's, uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, re real quickly. And I know Dave is pouncing like a cheetah back there to ask a question. I'm, I'm holding back. I'm holding back. <laughs> uh, no, don't hold back, man. So, so one of the things in listening to your stuff, Tom, and, and we're both fans. And so our, our chance to get you was like, I'm sorry to sound so predatory. The chance to have you on the show was... Uh, right, right, right. Uh, but you have this, you have won a number of hats, and I want to get into all those hats that you like. But one of the things that you do as a producer and as a mixer that I like, you have this ability to have dance elements work inside the sonic landscape and the arrangement of pop songs. I mean, oh, you, cool, cool, yeah. you sense that in the middle, you sense that in the Ed Sheeran Skrillex record, Lady Gaga mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Are you intentionally thinking about that or is that just Tom? Um, I, that must be a, a personality thing, but I, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of hip hop and, um, and then dance music. So mm -hmm. I think I just, I, I like drums to be really, really loud. Yeah. Um, that's just personally how I like to, to voice um, kind of the arrangement of volume in a song. And um, and I think I unintentionally uh, was focused on, you know, dance music just because it really had its moment, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, 
and, and just, you know, kind of blew up. And I, I just, you know, I, I was so at that point, um, focused on, you know, how do I make a rock song sound good? You know, I was just so like into making, you know, live drums sound a certain way. And then, you know, dance music came out of nowhere. And, and so I was, you know, I just wanted to figure it out. And so I think, you know, by that, uh, by me trying to do that, I just kind of, you know, integrated all these, um, uh, things about dance music into everything I work on now. It's, it's like, it's just a habit. <laughs> yes. it's, it's working out pretty well. Great. Great. So, uh, you mentioned arrangement of balance. I'm not familiar with that term, but I think I know mm-hmm. what you mean. I, I, sure. So are you saying that you like to manipulate the levels as much as you do EQ I and mean, compression? You, you, you're working a lot with levels. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I, I think, I think it's like, you know, just like a, a ratio, uh, between, uh, like the kick and the sub or a ratio between, you know, where the vocal sits in terms of, you know, the rest of the arrangement. Um, I guess some people call it a gain staging, I guess. I think that's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say, yeah. but I just, just in, in sort of like a, like a, a broad meaning of the term, um, I hope this makes sense. <laughs> well, it makes sense to me because um, uh, a lot of a lot of my stuff included when I first started engineering, I thought that that I I, I would place things in the mix based on their volume in the mix. Uh, but right. now, for example, I'll 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 make every I'll, I'll pick an I'll pick an item like the snare, and I, I build the mix around the snare, or I build the mix around right. the kick, or I build build the mix around the, an electric guitar. And that's mm-hmm. what that's what you're talking about. So 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 it's 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 it's, it's um, what do you call those little things with little blocks that you put together and and uh, and, and, and in, they have a big play, huh? In in you what is know it? What I'm what is talking it? About? You know, like like there's a there's a theme park with where you, where you take these little oh, blocks. Legos. Legos. It's like building Legos. Legos. Yeah, yeah, you, start yeah, with, yeah. you start one Lego and you build. That's the way I think about what you said. Gotcha. Uh, you know the arrangement. Now let me uh, let me right. just right. chime right. in. Can I just chime in and make a musical, important, professional correlation to Legos? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lego Lego Land is right beside the Nam headquarters. Right. So wow. they are tied together, and and the American Museum of Music. So. There you go. You'll never hear this fact on anything else ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, For right. <laughs> That's great. I didn't know that. So, so Tom, the, um, the, um, how did Get Your Snack On come around? I, I love it, and it was great to go back and hear stuff. And right. Give us yeah. the genesis of it and where, where it took you. The name and then what the process did, because it allowed you to – create and beats and, and sort of right. discover you do it. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, so get your snack on. Uh, so I've been asked this a lot. This was a, a AOL instant messenger screen name that I had back in <laughs> like middle school, I think. And wow. I'm just so bad at, at branding and naming that I felt like I wanted, you know, some kind of alias. I just thought like, Tom Norris was kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, it's my name. It's great. But I, I just wanted something, I think, that was like a more unique identifier. Um, so it just kind of stuck. I mean, I, I had the, uh, the domain name, like the .com. And, um, and then once I got into doing music as like a full-time thing, I just kind of, you know, kept it. And it was just a sort of weird thing. It's like, you know, it's like a run on sentence. It's not really like a name in a way. So it's right. kind of weird that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started a, a, a SoundCloud account and I just, you know, I'd post sound design experiments, just me trying to figure out, um, you know, how to create sounds I heard in songs or just, you know, create something that I heard in my head. And, um, and so that SoundCloud account, um, was just how I kind of sandboxed my way into, you know, the sort of self-education and, and music production and, uh, and, and I guess now mixing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was sort of the last 10 years for me. Yeah. No. And what's cool is that you use it as a place for you to experiment and 
grow? Did the was the feedback that you got important? Was that that helped guide you? Did you pay attention to it? Not pay attention to it? Um, I think I think the feedback from my friends was really important. I think what I learned through that experience was uh, learning how to uh, integrate feedback and how to use it constructively. Because yeah. I, would, I would, you know, I would send experiments to people and be like, I, I don't like this. Or, you know, they'd have, you know, this laundry list of things yeah. that I did wrong or whatever they thought that I did wrong. But I think what I learned through that is, um, you know, finding your, your trusted group of, of people who can give you constructive uh, criticism and, and can help you, you know, not, not just, you know, uh, knock down what you're showing them, but also, you know, help you think of new ways to make it better. And I, I think that also, sorry, go on. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think that taught me how to, at least I hope, uh, be a better collaborator and, and, you know, give feedback to my friends and to, to my collaborators too. And, and, and th- one of the reasons I brought it up is because I think so many, of, so much of our audience is gauging what they do based on what they get back and comments. Uh, I personally, in our team, I'm always recommending patience with that. You know, that don't let mm-hmm. 11 people tell you that you're not shit when, <laughs> when it's just not true. And if you don't learn how to filter and sort of build your own sense or your own advisory group to, that you can trust, you'll be off on a wild goose chase and never get any place. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Herb, uh, Herb, um, but what if what if what if I, what if I really am not worth shit? How, how does that work? <laughs> uh, it's, it's evident, and people will come in and take you away. <laughs> so, okay. So, I'm scared. I got to behind. Hey, uh, now that I've disrupted the whole flow, now's my chance. Uh, so, what the hell is linguistics? Is that is that the study of? of languages is that the study of the history of languages or what is it sounds fascinating and and like Herrick. yeah i mean so 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 what you just said was is exactly what linguistics is it's the study of of human language and and how humans process language how we learn language um the history of of human language and how it's changed over the years um I, I think one of the things that was so interesting about it to me is is how, uh, at least for me, unintuitively large the discipline is. There's like so many, you know, things that you can focus on in the field that are, you know, all take a lifetime to master. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's why I like, you know, audio so much because I feel like it's kind of the, the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, uh, that was, yeah, that was... I feel like a a part of my life that I really wanted to, you know, see. I wanted to try out and see if 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 you know I was going to become a linguist, and uh, I didn't. <laughs> so, now, on your passage through your journey, was was gray kind of the period, the access point to dance and the EDM and all that stuff? Was that the concierge moment to that space? Well, so. I, yeah, so I, I went to, so I kind of, I did, I was in bands in high school and then mm-hmm. I you think, play? sorry, what'd you play? Oh, I played guitar and keyboard. Okay, cool. Um, poorly, but you know, it was still fun. Um, and, uh, and, and I just, all my friends in high school were, um, you know, really smart kids and they all went to. Ivy League schools, and then I was the kid in bands who, you know, <laughs> didn't go on to one of these amazing institutions. And so yeah. I, I think I always felt that kind of like I need to do something academic. And you know, my parents are academics, and and kind of my whole family is full of college professors and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I think I felt this like inferiority complex in a way. So I, you know, I went out to college, and and uh, you know, I'd always loved linguistics, uh, something about, you know, that was just like really appealing to me. And, um, and then I met, you know, kids in my linguistics classes and I was like, Oh, those are linguists. Like these, these kids are obsessed with it. And I would, you know, go back to, uh, my dorm or whatever and just work on music constantly. So I was like, 
This is kind of, <laughs> you know, this is sort of self-evident. And, um, and then uh, Kyle from Gray uh, messaged me one day on Reddit, and I, th- I think he was just asking about the SoundCloud, maybe. You know, my SoundCloud, like something that I posted, mm. you know, how did you make this or... Or you know, do you want to work on me? I kind of forgot what it was, but um, but you know, we we got to talking, and then uh, he came and, and visited me, and like you know, stayed the night or something. I mean, we just became friends like almost instantly, and um, and and so he was, I think, at that time, moving to like a new apartment or something in L.A., and I was living in San Diego, and. Um, and he's like, you know, you should, you should move in with me. Um, starting this group with my brother. Um, it's called Gray. You know, we have these remixes um, that were, you know, that were getting noticed by uh, big artists. And um, and he's like, you know, you, you know, you've been working on music your whole life. It, it feels like you went to uh, medical school, and now on the day of graduation, you want to decide that you don't want to become a doctor, you know, you should at least give it a chance. And, um, and so that, that was kind of it. And, you know, I, I really didn't know what to expect, but, you know, we moved in and, and, uh, and fortunately his projects, you know, did, did super well. And, um, and so I kind of was able to, you know, be a part of that and, and, you know, uh, foster the the start of, of my career that way. So, this might be a good time. So let me ask you a couple of questions about uh, the middle. Uh, mm-hmm. Firstly, in a song called "The Middle," you panned everything out of the middle. Was that intentional? <laughs> um, I think that was <laughs> that was that was probably the result of. I think that was probably the result of the production for the most part. Um, I think a lot of uh-huh. that song is just. You know, you know what I'm talking about, about, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's <laughs> definitely a lot of, of stereo imaging on that song. So I think. You know, yeah, your panning your your panning decisions are um, they're they're so good. I, I I get angry when I hear that song, and I I hear that song probably more than any human being. It's in my right. references still, and right. uh, and that's uh, but but how did you make panning decisions? Like like in one four bar section, the the uh, the one of the snares is all the way to the right, and right and. Uh, it's, it, but it's all musical and it all makes sense. Uh, do you have a philosophy on panning? Um, I, I do have a general philosophy on panning. In terms of that song specifically, I got to say that was probably Kyle doing that. Um, and, and he doesn't mind if I talk about what he does because he talks about it with everyone. But um, uh-huh. I think there were parts of uh, that song where certain elements he used, I think the... Uh, this like panorama, this um, HTRF head transfer, uh, something. It kind of emulates binaural audio, um, oh, yeah. and it, it's this plugin called the Oculus Spatializer. It was made for the Oculus, yeah. you know, VR headset to, to simulate, you know, 3D audio. Yeah, and and. I, I think he still uses it, but um, for for a while there, he, you know, you just use it on any element to just kind of set it out into a weird part of the the stereo image, and so that might be what that was. And lastly, um, um, lastly, uh, there's a rumor going around that you don't put much on your stereo bus. Is that true? <laughs> I wonder where that rumor is from. Um, <laughs> I I didn't put much I don't I don't know what was on the stereo bus because I I basically you know worked on a part of it and then Zed took over and he did the, the final version so I don't know what ended up on his I have speculations but I, you know, I've never asked him um, okay. but uh, but yeah I think I think on that song my contribution to the master bus wasn't that great but um, but I mean, for, for all of the other, for all of the other, uh, great, uh, great songs. I mean, I can, you know, share those, those master of settings. Cool. Uh, great, 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 yeah. work. great. Work. So the, the, um, of all the toolkits, producer, mm-hmm. songwriter, sound designer, engineer, mastering engineer, do you right. like one or the other? 
Is there something that you call yourself? Um, I've, I've been calling myself like a finalizer or a, or a finisher or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. I don't really know what the right, uh, the right noun is, but, Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel like with a lot of, you know, these dance projects that I get, it's like, you know, here's my version. Can you finish it? You know, I've, I've gotten that sentence or request, uh, so many times over the years that I, I just kind of go, okay, well, I guess this is what I am. Yeah. Um, and so, and so that process, you know, it, it's been, uh, weird for me to, to work on some of these pop projects and I'll send something off and they'll be like, all right, now we're going to get it mastered. I'm like, well, that's great. I'm glad, but I already mastered it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so I've, I've learned over the years to, uh, that what the discipline of, of mastering really is. And, and I know that, you know, I'm definitely not as amazing as some of these incredible guys that, um, and, and girls that I've worked with mm-hmm. over the years are, but, um, but I think, I think for, you know, in, in dance music, a lot of producers, uh, just kind of learn the whole gamut of disciplines themselves just out of necessity. And so, um, when I've been asked to work on projects, you know, I'll do additional production most of the time, you know, whether it's something they've asked or they'll say, you know, just do whatever you hear. And, you know, when it works out, it's great. And then, and then I'll, you know, do the mix and, and, you know, a mastering pass. And, um, and so I kind of just, one of the things we've been preaching to the audience that we see from guests like yourself and we call it hybridism is that mm-hmm. you, you need to not being a specialist can be a lonely thing. It can be mm-hmm. a great thing to be a spec because you're now asked to really take on projects that are in continuing stages of development and you further that stage of development. Is, is that what you're right? Doing? Right. Yeah, I, I think so. I think also another advantage that I feel is um, it allows me to not, feel like I'm, you know, stagnating. I think, I think a lot of people really appreciate honing in on that one thing that they're, you know, exceptionally good at. And I, I, I totally respect that. I think that's, that's awesome. But I think for me, I, I need to jump around and, yes. and, you know, I love, you know, sometimes working on uh, trailer music or, or music for uh, sync stuff or, you know, sound designing for, um, you know, fully for like video games or something like that. And then going to music. And then, you know, I think that helps my highly advanced ADHD uh, <laughs> in, in many ways and in, in a therapeutic way. So, you know, that's what's worked um, for me. Um, uh, okay. I can't, I can't get away from the middle. I have one, I have one more question. <laughs> there's, there's something, there's something going around about how many people audition to, uh, to try and beat the rough. Uh, vocal, right. which was supposedly incredible, and oh, yeah. uh, Marin Morris uh, uh, from Nashville. I guess you could be considered a country singer. She mm-hmm. she she beat out s- some pretty famous names, which w- there's sure. no point in mentioning. But yeah. uh, do you know any part of that to be true? And if it is, can you can you can you tell us a little bit about it? Because I'm fascinated by how Zed, uh, and I know this is about you, not Zed. But um, right. he, he he had the patience to wait for the right vocalist, and and I think that's I think that says something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I don't want to speak for him, but I I think this was something that he might have picked up from, you know, the Max Martin, um, the legend. Okay. Uh, that um, you know that the the vocal is just the most at least for, you know, that type of music, it's, it's like the, the, the thing you have to get right out of, out of anything else. Uh, so that, you know, it's not only the writing, but also the performance and then the, um, recording of it. And, um, and so I think, I think that was sort of his mindset going in maybe his mindset, you know, again, I don't want to speak for him, but, but if I could imagine, uh, that was, that was probably the thought for, for that song and for, you know, subsequent songs, but, um, uh, that is true. There were quite a lot of people, um, uh, who, who were, you know, tried, tried out for, for the song. And, um, I mean, out of all the performances that I heard, 
everyone was really good. It was, it was kind of amazing. Cause I, you know, I was, I was living with, um, Kyle Michael Gray and I still do. Um, and so, you know, I, I heard that song basically from the initial demo that they got sent by monsters and strangers and, and Sarah Aaron's who, who wrote the song. Um, and, uh, you know, through their version. And then when it got sent to Zed, you know, through his version and then all the vocals that got recorded. I mean, it was, it was definitely a, a, a really interesting process compared to, you know, many of these other songs that I've worked on. And then also compared to the way, you know, songs are written in Nashville, which is a heck of a lot yeah. different. So, it, you know, yeah, thanks for sharing um, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, you know, Pooh Bear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. The, one of the things that, you know, I always like to ask about when you see great collaborations, like when Pooh Bear was on the show, mm -hmm. the way he talked about Sonny was just, it, it was like a brother, not just a talented, creative person. And, oh, yeah. And I see you have a long relationship with him. It says something, it says a lot about Skrillex. And, and then you have a number, Zed and Grimes, you have a number of people that there's mm -hmm. an association and a trust and a chemistry. What's... What is the magic with you and Skrillex? Where is it trust? And is it complementary skills? What would, how would you define it? It's interesting because I, I actually, I learned a lot uh, from Skrillex, like without him knowing, just by, you know, listening to his music over the years and then getting to work with him, I kind of felt, I think I, de I definitely felt at first, like, why does this guy want to work with me? Like, I, you know, I feel like he, you know, he's just, he's the best at, at, at uh you know everything that he does and i you know i still feel that way but um uh i think it might be that i devote a lot of my time to um the mix process and to the sound design you know kind of the the technical side of audio mm -hmm. and he's you know inc incredibly technical and is you know in a all meanings of the word, you know, sort of like a, a, a genius of music in my opinion. But, um, mm -hmm. he, I, I think because he's, he is a generalist, um, you know, if I could imagine maybe, you know, he, he, there are just times when he wants to focus on, uh, building out the song or, you know, figuring out what the song is and not necessarily focusing on the, you know, specific details of the sonic landscape mm -hmm. that the song lives in. Um, and so maybe that's, that's, that's where I come in. I, I, I think with him, I've always felt like it's not that he can't do what I do because he totally can and, and can do it better probably. But it's, it's just that like, I'm, I think a good resource for him if he needs to, you know, focus on something else or, uh, you know, just not have to worry about, um, specifically, you know, mixing something for and it, hours. And it could be that you're a pretty talented guy <laughs> as well, too. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, and that is, that's a process. And then you take somebody like Grimes, who sometimes the, it can be unstructured or feels like, you know, she has her artistic vision or she goes, uh, oh, yeah. do, you, do you just follow that? Do you contribute to it? I, I'm sure that's a, a different kind of process. Um, so with Grimes, I think, I mean, she, I, I mean, I guess she's, she's not unlike many other artists in that she, you know, works tirelessly for sometimes years on her songs. Um, but I, I think in recognizing that, you know, when I come in, um, I don't want to like be like, all right, you've put in your 500 hours. Now I'm going to change what I think the song should, you know, it's, it's more just like, how do I, in, in, in a very, I think, modern mixer-like way, you know, how do I just sort of enhance what's already there mm -hmm. um, without without trying to, you know, change the way the song is or how it feels uh, um, too much. But I think my working relationship with her has been pretty good because we both use Ableton, and so I can kind of just jump right into her, you know, project file and just go, okay, well, what's you know, what, what, how do I feel, you know, about what's working here and how do I just kind of enhance it without having to like, you know, try to stem out it, you know, in, in some cases the madness 
and then recreate, you know, the sort of magic that she's created um, in, you know, Pro Tools or Logic or whatever it is. Um, so I think, I think that just in a workflow way has honestly been um, something that's been great for, for both of us. And, working and, together. And, do you, and do you drive a Tesla? <laughs> um, I, I actually uh, pre-ordered one and then I, I felt like I had to cancel it because I'm not driving anywhere <laughs> right now. So, yeah. so yeah, but, but if, you know, if not for, for COVID-19, I'd be driving a Tesla right now. I got you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you mix in, uh, in Ableton when you mix? Like, like what, what DAW did you use for my favorite song, The Middle? <laughs> that was Ableton. Um, that was, I mean, that's, that's just, an, yeah, it's just another example of, because I, I started in FL Studio um, way back, you know, on version three, I think in like 2001. That's how I learned how to, you know, just put music together on a computer. And, and then, you know, when I met Kyle from Gray, you know, he was like, you know, he was Ableton, you should use Ableton too, it's the best DAW. And I was like, okay. And, uh, and then just everyone else who kind of came into my life at that moment also used Ableton. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I got to use Ableton now. And, and so I think that's sort of been the, the uh, through line of, of most of my collaborators is that we all use Ableton. It's just so much easier to kind of uh, integrate you know, ourselves into the workflow because we don't have to like, you know, stem out stuff yeah. and, and yeah. do that kind of process. It's a very creative uh, platform. Very creative. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to see some Tom Norris sample packs and other things, VST stuff coming down the line? Um, so I do, I do have sample packs that I've uh, made. Um, they're on Splice under the name Singular Sounds. Um, I think, you know, I'd love to, to keep putting out sample packs have just been increasingly busier over the years, which, you know, for better or for worse. Sure. Um, but, uh, I did start, and, and these are, these are all sample packs that I've made with, with, uh, Kyle from gray and, um, and, and we did start working on another sample pack, but then the Kaga album came up and then also, you know, COVID-19. So yeah. a little bit of a, a damper on things. Um, well, but, but in terms of VSTs, I, I have gone back into, uh, C programming and I, I started working on a, a bunch of these, um, you know, just, just little easy plugins to kind of get my feet wet with, with, uh, the whole DSP world, which mm -hmm. is very complicated, um, for me. Uh, but I made a DSer that I actually really, really like that, um, I used across the Gaga album and it was, you know, it was, it was awesome. Oh, cool. Um, so I think eventually it'd be, it'd be fun to, you know, sell those for a dollar or something like that. I don't know. Some, something, uh, something I, cool. I have maybe. a, I have a, I have a little EQ. We, maybe we could trade my EQ for your yeah. DSer. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. I've, what's I've up, actually seen up? your EQ. It looks, it looks great. <laughs> the um the um the pandemic has you know stopped so many things including sports but here in pensado's place we have kept the sports thing up every single week we have figured out yeah. how to work around the pandemic with something called batter's box so right. for all you people watching this is live sports contactless safe you can tune in each week so We've got a California boy up here now, and uh, That's right. the Floridian's going to go instant and uh, just knock him out the box, Tom. We 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 pull for the guest here. So cool. here's Batter's Box, Dave. Throw it up. Not not all of us pull for the guest. Well, that's um, true. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Limiter. Limiter. Uh, I would I would say Pro L, Fab Filter, Reverb, um, Ableton Reverb. 808s. Um, uh, Fab Filter Saturn. Mm. I couldn't answer this myself, but I'll try you. Kick snare relationships. Um, okay. I, I Shadow Hills uh, Master Bus Compressor. Woo! I'll say, yeah. <laughs> Summit. Yeah. Um, Summit. 
Summing. I uh, the glue. You guys say the glue. Hero or inspiration? Uh, Dave Pensato. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, okay. I want mean, okay. to right go. I want to go. I want to go deeper on that one. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, mixing uh, subs for mixing. Um, the KRK uh, ten inch um, sub. Loops. Oh, loops. Um, Ableton uh, warp beats mode. Clarity. Um, or clean, if you like, clean clarity. I would say I would say the Poltec EQP one A. Definitely. And lastly, what was the least expensive piece of gear that you used on a song we may have heard? I used the Elisa's thirty six thirty on on uh, a Skrillex song. Um, I think it's like uh, a thirty dollar right? bus compressor or something. <laughs> Uh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Well, Herm, I, I think I won that one because I, I think he, um, I think he kind of gave up his mojo when he credited me over himself, and so uh, <laughs> not of course, sure. I, although, although he's sneaky, he's got bass speed and foot speed, but but you don't, <laughs> see, it, you don't see it coming. But I have to give you credit, Dave. You threw a, a heater fastball, but he connected back with that Shadow Hills thing, man. That was. Yeah. Kudos to both yeah. of you. I was here a bit yeah. in awe. It was like watching The Last Dance, from Michael yeah. Jordan documentary. Yeah. Um, That's great. Uh, Tom, tell us a bit before we let you go, and we thank you for your time. Sure. Yeah. The Chromatica album's coming out. Lady Gaga, mm -hmm. I think she is an insane talent. Um, Me too. How was working with her? Give us, give us the Tom rundown. Uh, I mean, it was great. I, the, the occasions when she was in the studio, she uh, definitely gave... Um, useful feedback and and reactions to to what we were all working on. Um, so this is a project we were all uh, at Henson, um, at, at least at you know in the, the oh, time yeah. that I was working with the, uh, the you know the team, and um, and it, it was it was honestly great because you know I was in the mix room and then you know some of the guys were in uh, studio. B and A, and so we could all just kind of walk back and forth, and you know, kind of instantly um, collaborate and and you know, give feedback in real time, um, and also just hear everything kind of together in, in the same way. It wasn't like sending, you know, a, a protected link to someone and then hoping that it sounds, you know, translates on on their system. So when Gaga was there, I mean, <laughs> it was. It was always crazy. She's, you know, just like full of pizzazz. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. um, but, but, you know, I think, I think there were, um, a lot of things that she said about the songs that, you know, really, I don't know. I, I think, I think it made me see them a little bit differently because, uh, you know, a lot of the album is, is very like dance influence, which is, you know, kind of my wheelhouse, but, um, you know, she would, I, you know, I think, I think emotionally about music, I think that's, that's sort of just my guiding force. Like, it, you know, is this, does this feel like something? Um, yeah. but, but she would, you know, the way that she kind of put these emotions into words was just like something so uniquely Gaga that like in, in ways that I never, I wish I could like think of, you know, specific phrases off the top of my head, but just, just, I think that's, that was sort of my experience working with her that, that she you know, has such a unique um, way of interpreting music. Um, and so, yeah, you know. no, I think, I think the thing about her has a lot to do with her vision and her, right. how she processes her musicality through her vision. And the one time I met her, which was in ac by accident in the studio, she was also very cool. And, you know, I sort of approached it like, it's going to be the Gaga machine. Let me, and she said, Hey, how you doing? And I was like, Oh yeah. yeah. How are you? you know, it was, it was very regular. And uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That was, that was, that was definitely my experience as well. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, and your management has been great. We, we really appreciate they They've been on point. So just so you know, they're, they're doing good. a good job. Representing all right. All right. Fun. Glad to hear it. It is fast, great fast. to have, you on and focus in a space 
um, that beyond the Grammy nominations and the awards and stuff, um, a lot of our audience wants to know more about that space and how they can um, process it, work inside of it, learn from it. And, and these stories are invaluable to them because sometimes they can't get to them the same way. So, sure. so appreciate it. You know, we're here for you anytime. And, and Great. James, if you're ready, why don't you take us home? Okay, I'm going to try this. Um, it, um, it, it feels to me like um, during, during uh, the early part of my, uh, of, of my life, uh, musicians led the pathway through hard times. And uh, for me, it was the Vietnam War, and I was losing friends. And, and, and uh, single-handedly almost, a, a couple of big bands uh, stopped the war. And I, I, I think that we're on the verge of hopefully musicians and music getting us through this pandemic. And if not, I, I, I'd like to issue the challenge because mm -hmm. uh, that's our job, man. You know, um, we're artists and, 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 and the population should follow us, not the opposite. And um, so I'm, I'm looking forward. There's a lot of lanes that are, that are, that are wide open. Like it's a good time to, 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 to get to get new sounds into the equation and, and just widen genres. I, I, I'm not a big fan of these narrow lane genres. Music's music. It's only 12 notes. Let's, let's, let's use them all as, as widespread as we can and, and let's, as a force, try and get ourselves and get, and get everyone else through this pandemic. So uh, big, big, big hopes, big wishes, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.